Turn to page 394. Mr. Potter, our new celebrity. Good evening. Are you guys ready? Now, you knew, of course, we couldn't start this weekend without pausing to remember Alan Rickman. So let's make some noise for Alan, please. We know he touched all of our lives, and he remains in our thoughts and our memories as well. And this weekend, it's time to do some celebrating. Wizards, witches, and muggles, welcome to a celebration of Harry Potter 2016. <laughs> My name is Scotty B, and it is great to be back again for our third year celebrating one of the greatest icons of all time. Make some noise for Harry Potter. <laughs> How many of you are with us for the very first time? All right, and let's hear for those of you who have come back all three years. Yes. Well, welcome back again, ladies and gentlemen. This all began almost six years ago with the opening of the Wizarding World of Harry Potter at Universal's Islands of Adventure. Three more theme parks and two celebrations later, and here we are today. And you know what? We're going to take a look back at how this journey all began. Watch the video screen. Universal have given me the great honor in announcing that the Wizarding World of Harry Potter will be opening its gates uh, spring 2010. Today, we're going to share with you some very exciting details about Universal Orlando's newest project, the Wizarding World of Harry Potter, Diagon Alley. Maxima. The Wizarding World 
world of Harry Potter at Universal Studios Hollywood will open on April 7th, 2016. How incredible was that? Yes! Well, the journey continues this year, and we are very excited. Not only do we have many of your favorites back this year, ladies and gentlemen, but we've added some new content as well. This year, we've added a very special Saturday night experience. Here at the Music Plaza stage will be a tribute to the Harry Potter franchise, where I've heard there'll be some, uh, well, some special announcements made. You'll also get the opportunity to experience some brand new guest panels this year, so be sure to check your schedules for times and locations. The Expo is back again this year as well at Soundstage 33 with brand new experiences, of which we're going to take a look at right now. Let's check it out. It all begins with Scholastic. Celebrate Harry Potter at Scholastic's booth by sharing a message about what Harry Potter means to you. Who's been to the Expo already? All right. You can color in a magical page from our brand new Harry Potter coloring book. Be sure to enter Daily Raffles for a chance to win a copy of the new illustrated edition of Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone, a box set of all seven Harry Potter books or a Harry Potter coloring book. Collectible giveaways are available for Harry Potter fans of all ages. Now, let's move on to fan favorites, Mirfor Mina and Eduardo Lima this year, returning with Mina Lima. Graphic designers Mina Lima worked for 10 years on the Harry Potter films, creating countless unforgettable graphic props, some of which will be on display, including iconic pieces such as the Marauder's Map, Daily Prophet, and Hogwarts School Books. Since working on the films, they created the Mina Lima store, selling authentic reproductions of the film's artwork with limited edition art prints and stationery. They are currently in production of the new feature film, Fantastic Beasts, and where to find them. Now, the Warner Brothers Studio Tour London offers visitors the chance to relive the magic through the eyes of the filmmakers who brought the Harry Potter film series to life. Based on the film's production home in England, visitors can step onto authentic sets and admire the real props and costumes used during the filming. The studio tour is bringing an interactive mini tour experience to a celebration of Harry Potter 2016 giving you the chance to see the incredible behind-the-scenes talent that went into creating the iconic films. Next is Harry Potter the Exhibition. Are you a Gryffindor out there? Maybe you're a Slytherin. How about Hufflepuff? Or perhaps a Ravenclaw? Whew. At the beginning of each school year, the Sorting Hat places new Hogwarts students into a house. And now you too have the opportunity to get sorted into the Great Hall setting, inspired by the Blockbuster Touring Exhibition. Step inside the expo and the red carpet is rolled out, welcoming you to an area celebrating the global impact Harry Potter the Exhibition has had during its seven-year 12-city tour, including an exclusive Quidditch-inspired photo opportunity. This year, the panel features acclaimed prop maker, Pierre Bohana. Now, Paul Harris returns as well with his wand dueling skills. Who was here for that last year? That is an exciting time. He's full of energy, and he's ready to do this all again. Now, to tell us even more about the exhibition, please welcome Eddie Newquist, creative lead of the team who produced Harry Potter, the exhibition, to the stage. Let's welcome Eddie. How you doing, Eddie? I'm great. How are you? Very good. Very great good to as see well. You. Now, why don't you tell us a little bit about the exhibition, if you would? Well, for those of you who haven't had a chance to see it, the exhibition offers fans really all over the world the chance to see hundreds of props and original costumes and creatures from the entire film series. And we've been traveling from city to city since 2009, and we just announced an extension to the exhibition. So if you're a world traveler, you'll see it out there. And uh, we're going to be on the road till 2020, which is really big news for wow. us. Wow. Yeah, really excited. That's awesome. And uh, where are you guys going next with the uh, tour? Um, well, I, I can't really tell you because we haven't announced it. It's, it's a secret, but I'm, you're cool. I mean, I'm, I'm sure. Uh, I can I'm whisper sure, it to you. We, no, I mean, not to me, but I, I'm sure they all want to hear where you guys are going next. You guys want to hear where we're going next? All right. Come on, Eddie. Okay, uh, but, but for an announcement this big, mm -hmm. I'm going to need a little help. 
If okay. That's all right. You guys, is all right if I ask for a little help? Yeah, let's call do a it. Call friend. Sure. All right. Well, a really good friend of the exhibition, a good friend of ours, um, and has just been a huge supporter, is here. Uh, he's hanging around this weekend. So, okay. uh, Matt, will you please join us on stage? Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Matthew Lewis. Hey there. How are you going? How are you doing, Matt? I'm good. I'm All right. good. Thank you very much. Well, uh, I guess, I guess you've got a couple words to say, right, Matt? Uh, yeah. Well, uh, I, I happen, I happen to know where the exhibition's going to be. You do. I do. Okay. Sure. Anybody out there want to hear where the exhibition's going to go next? All right. It's, it's quite. Can, can I, can I tell them? Eddie. Uh, you, you want him to tell you? <laughs> Please do. Okay. Harry Potter, the exhibition, has a very long trip to make. It will be traveling across numerous countries in order to get to its new destination and open its doors on June 30th in Brussels, Belgium. Wow. Yeah, we are so thrilled to be going to Brussels and, and going back to Europe. You know, the, the exhibition was in Paris. It was a huge hit. And Matt can attest, when, when the exhibition was in Cologne, it was a huge hit. Yeah, I, um, I, you know, it's one of the great pleasures that we have to travel the world and, and showcase Harry Potter to people outside of the UK. Um, you know, coming here and being able to open the Diagon Alley last year and then to come back to the celebration, it means a lot to us. So to, to travel to other countries is a great experience. Cologne was the same, and I'm sure Brussels will be outstanding as well. Well, and, and, and we, uh, there's a pretty cool contest that we're going to do too. Should yeah. We, should we tell them about the contest? Not about the contest. Okay, so... What we're going to do, we're going to have one lucky winner and a friend. We're going to choose one, and we're going to bring them to Brussels for the opening. And so they're going to be our correspondent. Awesome. It's going to be <laughs> awesome. Uh, they are going to work with a camera crew and producer, and they're going to be the Pottermore special correspondent for the grand opening. And they're <laughs> Their interviews and experiences will be featured on Pottermore for the rest of the world. What do you guys think about that? Awesome. So we're, we're huge fans of Pottermore. I'm sure all of you are. So, so keep your eyes on Pottermore. The details will be there. And make sure you sign up because it's going to be really, really fun. I think it's excitable. I'm signing up for it. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> let's make some noise for Matt and Eddie. Thank you both so much. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. All right, and I think the name may have been mentioned, but uh, if this sounds familiar to you, feel free to make some noise out there. Pottermore. That's right. Tonight we are very excited to share with you an exclusive reveal from the Pottermore with some never before seen writing from J.K. Rowling herself about the wizarding world we all know and love. Please welcome Henrietta Stewart Reckling. Fabulous to be here tonight. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Pottermore. We are delighted to be here with you all. My name is Henrietta Stewart Reckling, and I stand here on behalf of a team of people whose entire mission in life is to bring you magic. <laughs> in September last year, we launched a new version of Pottermore.com as the digital heart of J.K. Rowling's Wizarding World. It was designed to work beautifully on mobile and let you explore as much of J.K. Rowling's imagination and your own as possible. Anyone who visited the new Pottermore also heard a little welcomed message from a very familiar voice. Welcome to Pottermore. This is my magical corner of the internet, a place where you can explore my writing, both familiar and new, and where you can read features, articles, and news from the Pottermore team. New information will be revealed about the characters, places, and magic you're familiar with, as well as introductions to a few new characters, places, and notions. Pottermore is a place where you can unleash your imagination and allow it to lead you on adventures. If you need a little extra magic in your life, you've come to the right place.
that always gets me right here. We've put more content on the site than ever before, including exclusive news and features, plus, of course, brand new writing by J.K. Rowling. <laughs> so far in Pottermore, we have revealed the family background of the Potters, the pre-Hogwarts life of Minerva McGonagall, and Remus Lupin's devastating backstory. And of course, everything we can tell you about two very exciting things happening in the Wizarding World this year. Starting off with the stage play, Harry Potter and the Cursed Child, which opens this summer in the West End in London, and the Warner Brothers film, Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them, which premieres later this year in November. We'll be bringing you news, interviews, and features direct from the set and the stage later this year. I am also incredibly proud to announce that Pottermore has launched two reimagined features much loved by you, the fans. The Sorting Ceremony and The One Selector. <laughs> Using the original questions written by J.K. Rowling and with beautiful new illustrations from Pottermore, our fans can once more discover their houses and wands. We hope you'll enjoy being sorted and letting your wand choose you on Pottermore.com. <laughs> now, you've told us how much you love new writing by J.K. Rowling. So tonight, we have a really special treat in store for you. Exclusively for you on Pottermore, we are unveiling never-before-published details about the wizarding schools from right across the globe. And here to help us with this magical reveal is Ivana Lynch. Welcome, Ivana. Hello, everyone. <laughs> Thank you for coming out, and I'm thrilled to be here tonight and to share this with you. Um, it's very exciting information. I geeked out over it earlier, so I think you will too. Um, so first of all, you know how much Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry means to me, and I know how much it means to you as well. Um, it cr created some of you know the most famous British wizards of all time. It schooled them, it taught them all their magic, and um, and it was also my home. Um, and I know lots of you have been sorted into your Hogwarts houses as well. And if you haven't, you can go on Pottermore today and get sorted there because there's a new quiz, which I also did. And I got Gryffindor again, just saying. Um, <laughs> it's really fun. Um, I thought I was going to get Slytherin when they brought out the cats because I thought most cats are Slytherins, but it still worked. You know, just an aside. Um, but first, what if I told you that aside from Hogwarts, there are 10 other wizarding schools in the world? Some that we know of already, such as Bobatons, which is located somewhere in the Pyrenees, and Durmstrang, which is situated somewhere in the far north of Europe. But what about the rest of the world? You guys. <laughs> um, what if I told you that there are wizarding schools in Africa, Brazil, Brazil. I knew that would get cheer. Australia, Russia, and other secret locations. So this evening, for the very first time, I have the pleasure of reading, of revealing brand new details about some of these wizarding schools. So I'm going to take it to Joe's words now, which I read from a page, because it would be weird to read Joe's words on a teleprompter. They just fill the pages. So I'm going to read them from here. <laughs> so here we go. There are 11 long established and prestigious wizarding schools worldwide, all of which are registered with the International Confederation of Wizards. Smaller and less, regulate, less well regulated institutions have come and gone, are difficult to keep track of, and are rarely registered with the appropriate ministry, in which case I cannot vouch for the standard of education they might offer. Anyone wishing to know whether there is an approved magical school in their region should address an owl inquiry to the International Confederation of Wizards Educational Office. There you go, you have the address now. Um, 
The precise location of each of the following schools is a closely guarded secret. The schools fear not only Mughal persecution, not us, we're not Mughals, by the way, for it is a sad fact that at various times in their long histories, all of these institutions have been buffeted by the effects of wizard wars and of hostile attention from both the foreign and domestical magical communities. It is not only in Britain that the education of magical youth has been, a subject, has been subject to ministry interference or pressure. As a general rule, magical schools tend to be situated in landlocked mountainous areas, although there are notable exceptions, as will be seen, as such regions are difficult for muggles to access and easier to defend from, other dark, from dark wizards. So as we know, these wizarding schools go to great lengths to guard their secrets, which is why it's so exciting to be able to reveal the names and locations of four more schools. So you can get your applications in, ASAP. Um, keep in mind that a lot of what I'm about to tell you has never been shared with anyone before, but you will find all this and more on Pottermore's interactive map that you can see here this weekend, and it's really cool. They have like beasts and just things, people flying on trees. You have to look at it. I can't really explain it. Um, the first school I can exclusively reveal uh, is, and by the way, this is phonetically spelled, so I'm definitely pronouncing it correctly, Castelo Bruxu in Brazil. <laughs> Hidden deep in the rainforest, this is how J.K. Rowling describes this mysterious school. Castelo Bruxu is an imposing square edifice of golden rock often compared to a temple. Both building and grounds are protected by the Kaipora, small and furry spirit beings, sounds so cute, who are extraordinarily mischievous and tricky and who emerge under cover of night to watch over the students and the creatures who live in the forest. Former Castelo Bruxu headmistress Benedita Dura Durado, that one is not spelled for me, so excuse me, Brazil, um, she was once heard to laugh heartily on an exchange visit to, the Hog to Hogwarts when headmaster Armando Dippet complained of Peeves the poltergeist. Her offer to send him some Kaipora for the Forbidden Forest to show you what trouble really is was not accepted. Well, that's all I can say on the Brazilian magic school. So, yeah, as I say, get in your applications quickly. Uh, to find out more, you'll just have to go to Pottermore this evening and read it yourselves because there is more information on there, by the way. This is abbreviated. The next school I can reveal exclusive new writing about is the Japanese wizarding school. It's called Mahuto Koro. Here's a little of what J.K. Rowling has to say about Mahuto Koro. The ornate and exquisite palace of Mahuto Koro is made of mutton fat jade and stands on the topmost point of the uninhabited, or so Muggles think, volcanic island of Minami, Iwo Jima. Students are presented with, this is the coolest bit by the way, I can't believe Hogwarts didn't think of this. Students are presented with enchanted robes when they arrive, which grow in size as they do, which the Weasleys could totally have done with, and <laughs> which gradually change color as the learning of their wearer increases, beginning a faint pink color and becoming, if top grades are achieved in every magical subject, gold. If, now this is where it gets bad, if the robes turn white, this is an indication that the student has betrayed the Japanese wizard's code and adopted illegal practices, which in Europe we call dark magic, or broken the international statute of secrecy. To turn white is a terrible disgrace, which results in instant expulsion from the school and trial at the Japanese Ministry of Magic, Ministry for Magic, which I just think we would never have had a Voldemort if we had had those robes. So Hogwarts, you, mis you missed a trick. So yeah, anyways, um, I, I think that's all on the Japanese school. Oh, if you want to learn more about how the Japanese first discovered Quidditch and why they're so very good at it, go to Pottermore within the next few minutes because that information will all be there. Um, but before you go there, I've got two more schools to reveal. This next one is located in Africa, and it's called Wagadu. Here's a beautiful description of the school from J.K. Rowling. Although Africa has a number of smaller wizards, wizarding schools, 
that's not why I said that, sorry. Smaller wizarding schools, there's only one that has stood the test of time, at least a thousand years, and achieved an enviable international reputation, Wagadu. The largest of all wizarding schools, it welcomes students from all over the enormous continent. The only address ever given is Mountains of the Moon. Visitors speak of a stunning edifice carved out of the mountainside and shrouded in mist, so that it sometimes appears to simply float in mid-air. You'll definitely want to read about an incident involving the Wagadu students and their ability to transform, transfigure into safari animals in sync. That part of the story is, of course, exclusively on Pottermore 2. So nobody's going out tonight. We're all going to Pottermore, <laughs> me included. Um, and now, the final school I'm able to reveal to you tonight, I'm especially excited about this one, and I think you will be too. It's the American School for Magic. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> the place where American witches and wizards are educated. So you guys have all been there, so it's not a big deal. <laughs> Um, I can reveal for the first time that the name of the North American Wizarding School is Ilvermorny. There you go. <laughs> That's actually all I can say on it for now. <laughs> because I'm told that Pottermore will have a lot more to come on Ilvermorny and all these other wizarding schools soon. So make sure to stay tuned and keep reading Pottermore because they're always releasing new information. Thank you so very much, Ivana. Thank you. Thank you for the privilege of reading that. How wonderful. Really Thank you. Thank you. So we're, we're pleased to say that the full entries on the Brazilian African and Japanese schools are live on Pottermore and via the interactive map for you all to read right now. But you'll have to keep checking back if you want to know more about the elusive Ilvermorny. So we really hope you enjoy what you discover on Pottermore and have a wonderful weekend. Thank you so much. Thank you, Henry and Ivana. Let's give them both a big round of applause. So make sure you keep an eye out, ladies and gentlemen, for the map of the expo, and be sure to download Blipper to access the exclusive new content as well as much more. Now, that was pretty exciting news and some great content. What do you guys think of that? Now, tomorrow we wanted to mention that Harry Potter Experience, the London tour, will be uh, having two guests with them as well. We talked about Paul Howard earlier with the wand demonstrations, as well as Pierre, and he'll be here tomorrow as well. So make sure you check your listing as they'll be presenting on stage too with that. Now, I've got a question for you guys. Are you ready to welcome the rest of the cast from the Harry Potter film series? Ladies and gentlemen, she's a member of Dumbledore's Army and the Ravenclaw Seeker. Our next guest is the actress who portrayed Cho Chang. Please welcome Katie Lung. Hi, Katie. Our next guest portrayed Neville Longbottom who started his journey as shy and clumsy, but as we all know, finished as a courageous hero. Please welcome back Matthew Lewis. <laughs> and now, ladies and gentlemen, she was the youngest of the Weasleys and the true love of Harry Potter, Ginny Weasley. Please welcome Bonnie Wright. Hi, Bonnie. And our final guest this evening portrayed one of Harry Potter's best friends. As Ron Weasley, he stood by Harry's side from the very beginning. Please welcome Rupert Grint. How you doing, Rupert? Now, 
We are extremely excited to have all of you here. Thank you very much. And we've got very, something very, very special in store for all of you. But we need everyone's participation out there. So do you guys want to help us out? Now, as you can see, our stars have their wands. So please, ladies and gentlemen, get your wands at the ready as well. Now, I want you to hold those wands up really high for me. Great. Together, we are all going to close out the evening with a spell. When I count down from three, I need everyone to say Lumos Maxima. Are you ready? Let's try it one time. Three, two, one. That was, that was pretty good. But I, you guys think they can do it a little better than that? Maybe a little louder? Maybe a little more energy? Let's try it again. Three, two, one. Oh, I love it. I think we're ready for it. Ladies and gentlemen, hold them high. Three, two, one. Lumos Maxima.